Now that we've got our pipe bend cut up, we need to develop one of these sections. Now these three sections are the same, and the two smaller ones are simply one of these cut in half. So we need only to develop one of them, and we've got all the profiles. We simply make one, one of these, then guillotine it down the middle, and we've got the two smaller pieces. So to get started on one of these, we'll select the middle one, do a control copy, then we'll make another design and paste it, control V. Now if we click down on the Z, we have it in the orientation it was in, in when it was part of the main bend. So to make it convenient for us, we're going to reorientate this so that the central axis down this slice here is horizontal and parallel or orthogonal to the grid. So we'll select the solid on the move tool and this is at 45 degrees to the horizontal so we're going to move it this way so it looks as though it's going to need to be 315 degrees now the next thing we need is a sketch plane which is facing us here and is running right through this diameter from there to there now that's not easy to do uh, directly so we start off by putting a plane through the middle which we can do quite easily and we do that by using the plane tool That's by selecting that edge and control click selecting that edge now if we put a plane in it always puts the plane in in the middle of the two selected edges now we can rotate the plane with the red rotator here 90 degrees and V for facing us and we can make a sketch plane, just click the K key and there we have a sketch plane. Now we can start creating our geometry. We need to show this angle. We've used a construction line for that. And we want a circle which the radius appears halfway across this section so we need to put a construction line there and our circle we can find the middle of that line and it turns out to be 1.875 inches <clears throat> and then we can move it to there. Now we've got all we need to construct the, f the form required for this particular part of the bend. The next step is to divide this circle into several sections. Now we're going to put that in the center and create a pattern, create patterns down there and we rotate this until we see patterns going all the way around. Right. So it's settled on count seven, we want 20 of these. Return. Now we can use more construction lines to drop them from there down to here. Now we've got to make sure these lines are vertical. You see up here you get, you get a, a little 
right angle square in there showing that the line is vertical on that particular radius. So we'll go on that one and we do the same again here. Now we just by eye I can see that that is parallel with the first one and we'll keep doing that. Now we need some vertical lines along here. We've still got the construction lines so and the grid, so we'll put a one vertical line. We need a number of these lines corresponding to these positions on the circle along here. So they have to stretch from there to that distance around there which is pi times the radius or pi d over 2 divided by 2 and we're going to do that by creating patterns again create patterns and we pull Now the distance there is 2.26 but what we need is pi which is 3.14159 approximately times the diameter which we were, we saw was 1.875 divided by 2. Return. We've got two shown at the moment, and what we need is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Return. Okay, we'll expand this a bit. That's about as big as we can get, I think. And showing all of the yes. Now we've got to put horizontal lines in from this point intersecting with the vertical lines. So again with the construction line selected we select here. Now you have to ensure that these lines are at right angle and there you see the right angle sign in there. There we go. Now this is one here. Take it. And now we can trim away everything we don't need. Oops. And now that we've got that, we can put a horizontal line go to the middle of there and get a line right down. Now to get the final form of our part, 
The next step is to select, right click the horizontal line and set it as a mirror line. Right click this end vertical line and set that as a mirror line. And now we're going to use the spline tool and this is where the magic happens. I think we'll turn the snap to grid off. And we see down down below there it's creating a mirror of what we're doing. And to the far right, we see it's also doing the same there. So we can continue. Skip, trim, and before we do that, right click and take the mirror off, deselect mirror line, trim, Line tool. And finally we can delete, select, we can delete all, the, all of this lot. Pull tool. Point one eight seven five return. Now, if I print this, print, and there is the part printed out. Now, I'm going to cut this out with a pair of scissors, or rather, I've already done one of these and cut it out and glued it together and there it is there's our piece of trunking and you can imagine if one of these is sliced down the middle you've got the two end pieces so there's the final product hope you enjoyed this and hope it's going to be useful to you See you soon. Bye.